Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and we bring you yet another really off-the-rails obscurity in literature. This is Pure Trance by Mizuno Junko, and just looking at the cover, you're going to be in for a treat. Ooh, adults only. Yeah, it is, but just because it is so deranged and crazy... I, I think it would frighten most children off, despite the cutesy artwork. Um, if you're not familiar with Mizuno's artwork, it tends to be very cutesy, very kind of Tezuka-ish in its retro, cutesy, gothic, kawaii aesthetic, which I've heard it referred to before. Um, you know, there's shades of Sanrio in there, and rampant drug usage, and bondage, and nudity, and gruesome disembowelments and torture it's it's just all over the place i don't even know how i first came across mizuno stuff i i really dig most of her color work she's done lots of interesting color covers artwork for a variety of publishers sources personal works uh, i know i feel like she did something back with danzig's verotic back in the 90s when that was a thing uh, that's really dating myself, but yeah. Fun story, I got yelled at by Danzig Security because he didn't have things clearly labeled at Comic-Con one year, and I got a bunch of Devilman books signed by Gonagai, and I got no Gonagai to wave and shrug, and oh well, but I got my book signed, so yeah. Take that, Danzig. Anyway. The inside cover uh, is what I always kind of typify with typical Mizuno artwork, you know, just that crazy denseness of, you know, cute and horror combined together. Skulls, missing body parts, spiders, demons. I love those end papers. Originally, and you can see here a little sampling of it, I guess these were actually inserts for a series of CDs that came out between 1996 and 98. Um... I am not aware of it. I wasn't in a you know house and trance music at the time, but I found that very interesting. It says it right here. We've got her website as well. I do want to say that there's been a couple of like picture books that she's done. So we've got all kinds of clones, um, and yeah, there's lots of nudity in this book and lots of dense artwork, but. I don't feel like it's ever in a sense of like titillation. It's just nobody bothers wearing clothing in this book. One of the cool things is there's all these little liner notes, footnotes on like literally every page almost. And I guess a lot of those weren't there in the original offering of the book. So we have this character who's really obsessed with wanting to be a pop star while she works for this crazy director who's obsessed with wanting to eat meat and uh, just weirdness. Weirdness overall. Lots and lots of drugs. Feeding drugs to clones. Um, they're constantly getting high, playing weird video games, losing their clothing. And it's all set in this like grim post-apocalyptic landscape. I, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's just like cutesy horror, if that's if that's a way to describe a book. Uh, it's it's out there. So eventually, our main heroine escapes after being graphically mauled and attacked. And for as gruesome as it is, most of the actual you know implied bad stuff or adult stuff is usually off camera other than the copious amounts of rampant needle usage and blood spewing all over the pages uh, as they're raising all kinds of monstrosities in their laboratory. About a third of the way through our heroine escapes as I was saying and then makes her way to a grim dystopian apocalyptic landscape that looks like something out of a, like, what's his name, Kazuo Mezu type work. And you've got, like, the remains of the original inhabitants are reduced to just spines and brains floating around. 
as our heroine meets up with the local people that are living around out there still. It's out there. It's really out there. Eventually, finding some kids who have psychic powers and those, those kids uh, subsequently like join in a three person fusion of a body and things happen and again the artwork is really interesting and it just moves at such a breakneck speed there is constantly stuff happening on almost every single page and a lot of it's very disjointed but then again you know a lot of these serializations were put in you know cd booklets so i, I don't know if it would have made any sense to the random person picking up one single copy of those CDs. The artificial nurses that show up later on because they've been bred in test tubes because that's what they do in this world. And again, we have like very Sanrio looking characters that work in the main hospital. And I feel like as the work goes, you know, things do get more interesting as the story progresses and then they get even crazier as the main antagonist ends up losing out and we have all the characters showing off oh here's here's where we all combine our powers into a new <laughs> unified super beam yeah it's out there um you don't come across books like this very often I'm like, if this doesn't get flagged, I, I've got some other stuff that maybe one of these days we'll show you guys along the same lines of just sheer bizarre weirdness. And again, very disjointed in how it all comes together. And what's funny is, look who even says the exact same thing. You got Mike Patton of Faith No More and Mr. Bungle basically saying... <laughs> The innocence and beauty of a childhood dream. It's there with the visceralness. Uh, absolutely, I would 100% agree with his comments here. Exploding with life and moving at a speed that makes the rest of the world seem asleep. Yeah, it's super breakneck. Um, I have no idea what I was getting into with this. And having actually read it, I'm still not 100% sure. So, if you want something different, I know this was originally released in soft cover. I want to say that it had issues with uh, durability and staying together, which was why it got re released in 2019 in hardcover. Uh, I don't think I've ever even seen a copy of a collected version in Japanese. And again, I haven't looked very hard. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to see if I can find an actual art book of Mizuno's. I know she's done plenty of galleries and exhibitions. And I mean, I know. Right off the top of my head, I remember she did an Adventure Time cover uh, and like some fairy tale illustrations that I think actually got published in a hardcover that were a little bit more rated PG, a little more tame for her stuff. And I want to say she might have done some like Cthulhu ish type stories as well. Maybe that's what I remember from Verotic. I don't know. If you can help me fill in those gaps out there, that'd be certainly appreciated. But yeah, this is some crazy stuff. Uh, definitely almost like borderline on like outsider type art. In that it, it looks so cutesy, but it's just so out there. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, um, I have some other recommendations of very wild books that just seem to defy logic and good taste and common sense. Uh, Prison Pit come into example. I don't even know if I could show Prison Pit on this without getting in, in trouble with YouTube. Not that it's, you know, horribly filthy. Well, no, it is. Uh, that's a different... I think Last Gas published that too. Or maybe it was Fanographics or Kitchen Sink. I don't remember. Anyway, we're rambling now, so that's a good point to stop. Uh, I'll see if I can find a link if you want to take a look at this yourself and experience the insanity that this book is going to bring with it. By all means, I encourage it. So, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.